Ho, 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 and welcome to the Uncle Borby Christmas special. Hope you're excited. Also, hope you've been a good uh, boy or girl. As far as opening hand goes, yeah, we've got uh, Ancient Tomb, so let's go and mulligan. Not super wild about that. Uh, we've got Tranquil Thicket. And, uh, man, that is a very clunky hand. Yeah, let's go and mulligan. I'm not super wild about that one either. And we'll keep. Don't really want to go past that. And hopefully there's a land on Gruel Turf. We'll put that on top and get off to a, a little bit of a slow start. So uh, let's go ahead and get down Tranquil Thicket. We'll have that come into play tapped. Because if we get down Gruel, uh, the uh, the tap land, then we'll have to bounce it back to our hands. So we're going to go get down the uh, Tranquil Thicket. And then hopefully we can get down the uh, Tri Builder and uh, bounce back for some of these land drops. But yes, welcome to the Uncle Borby Christmas special. Hope you're excited to drink some Gruel Eggnog and throw some Christmas presents around the room. We're going to have to check the... Uh, the naughty or nice list on Queen Marchesa, but last time I remember, I think she might be on the naughty list, so we're going to have to, uh, might have to throw some presents her way. Let's go to get down Gruel Turf. Uh, there's nothing, unfortunately, we can do for one, so we're just going to go ahead and bounce back. Uh, well, I guess technically we could cycle it, and I want to make the land drop either way next turn. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So we are playing Uncle Borby, Trample. Whenever Uncle Borby deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand, the rest into your graveyard. Then discard a land card for an activated ability. Uncle Borby deals three damage to any target. Uh, Queen Marchesa, Death Touch and Haste, and whenever Queen Marchesa enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, the opponent is the monarch. Created 1-1 one, one green, uh, excuse me, a 1-1 one, one black assassin creature token with Death Touch and Haste. Don't want to forget that Haste. Uh, it's going to get down Tribe Builder. That's going to be 1-2-3. Like I mentioned, a little bit of a slow start, but uh, once we get down the Tranquil Thicket and then crack Tribe Builder, we'll be back on Splendor Reclamation and uh, we're still stuck on Horn of Greed and uh, Rampaging Baylos, but uh, yeah, we've we got a good foundation going. Then we're simply just going to go and pass the turn. Now, unfortunately, I do not want to uh, auto-yield because our opponent might go for a piece of removal. And that would be one of the worst things out there is if they go for a piece of removal on Tribe Elder. And uh, we have auto-yield on and we don't get the land, so we're not going to do that. In fact, let's go ahead and go for the uh, Tribe Elder Crack. And we're going to go and grab a, uh, another red source, even though we didn't, well... I guess technically, well, we do have a couple different, we've only got like one that's double red. So let's go and grab a green source off of a tribe builder. That way it'll at least keep us on for a Praetor's Council. So let's grab that forest. And we are rocking the, uh, the snow-covered forest for this Christmas special. So it's always nice to see that. Let's go for Horn of Greed. It's going to be one, two, three. And once we get on Horn of Greed, we can make this uh, snow-covered mountain land drop, which is a wonderful thing to draw into. And we'll draw, be able to draw an Orcish Lumberjack. Is that something we want to get down? Yeah, we'll go for it. Why not? I was going to get that down and then anything else. I meant to get the, actually, I think they might have the old art on there. So basically, Dan Frazier, I'm pretty sure Dan Frazier did the original Orcish Lumberjack art. And uh, he was at, uh, Graham, if you listened to a Lounge a while back, you've heard this story. But uh, Orcish Lumberjack, he did the original Orcish Lumberjack. And that's one where there's like an orc and like this weird like little like Star Wars looking, uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, the little walkers or whatever. He's like in this weird thing chopping down trees. And so whatever uh, Grand Prix Modern event I went to, he was going to be there. And I was like, well, I've got a, uh, I think it's Dan Frazier. I can't remember. Whoever, whoever did the original art for Orcish Lumberjack, whatever his name is, it's going to be Dan Frazier for the video, but I could be wrong. So whatever he showed up, um, and he had his little booth thing, and I was like, well, I'll bring Orcish Lumberjack for him to sign. And so I go over there, and he's working on a play mat that somebody commissioned. He's, like, hand-drawing, like, a white play mat. And his little helper's right there. And so I stay in there. And the little helper, he kind of looks at me and nods his head like, I acknowledge your presence is here. And he just holds his hand up, like, one second. So I'm like, okay, all right, I'm excited. This is my first card to get signed by an artist. I've always enjoyed Orcish Lumberjack. It's a pretty cool card. So I stay in there. And like, five minutes goes by. And then I kind of look back over the uh, the assistant. And I'm like, what's going on, dude? I've got to get, I've got to get back to the next round. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got five total mana. Uh, we can sacrifice one of our mountains. We do have Splendid Reclamation, so why not? Get down Rampaging Baylos, draw land, get down Horn of Greed. I think that'll be pretty good. Uh, let's go and sacrifice Snow Covered Forest. Let's go ahead and use our Orcish Lumberjack to... Uh, oh, look at how beautiful that little mana spread is. Uh, let's just add triple green off of this forest to make ourselves... Uh, make sure Baloth feels really happy. Get down Gruel Turf. We're going to go for Rampaging Baloth. Get that down. Let's go for Command Tower. Oh, look at that. 
end up with a 4-4 beast token. Yes, we're going to use that ability. Get that beast, and we'll be able to draw an additional card, too. And we draw into Overblaze. Oh, okay. So let's do this. Um, it's going to put us at 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, let's just simply just going to go and pass the turn at this point right now. We desperately need Life from the Loam with Overblaze. So Overblaze is one of these far, these really fun cards on this Uncle Borby Christmas special. Um, so we can target Uncle Borby with Overblaze. Each time this target permanent we deal damage, it deals double that damage to target uh, player permanent instead. So if we have a, land, a handful of lands, we get down Uncle Borby, we go for Overblaze on Uncle Borby, everybody's in the Christmas spirit once we get that going. They're just overblazed with Christmas spirit. So hopefully that's something that we can kind of start working towards. But back to the story. Um, so I'm waiting there and five minutes go by and I look back at the helper kind of like, dude, I'm, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> and he looks at me and he holds his hand up kind of like one more. I'm not, and at this point, I'm like, why is he not telling him I'm like right here? He's not like, he's not doing like a live painting. He's just working on a playmat commission. So another five minutes go by. And then he gives me this look like I'm about to interrupt him. And then finally, like he, Dan Frazier looks up from the play mat that he's drawing on. And he's like, oh, have you been standing here? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you need a card sign? I'm like, yes. And he's like, let me sign it for you. And I'm just, and then I look over at his helper and he like smiles like, I fixed it for you. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you didn't do anything. You just like, <laughs> you just sat there and just told me to wait for a little bit. Anyway, that was, that was a fun little moment. Fun little magic moment. It's one of those moments in magic where... It's just, it felt very Seinfeld or uh, Larry David, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, when I was just standing there, just like, come on. All right, so we got hit pretty hard with the Fiery Confluence, uh, Destroy Target Artifact, and they did take care of our Orcus Lumberjack, so that is a major bummer. So at this point right now, we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got five total mana. We go for Seek the Horizon. It's going to be two basics. Uh, we get to put it into our hand. That's going to be our land drops for sure. Yeah, we need to get to Uncle Borby pretty quick. So let's go and go for Seek the Horizon. That's going to be one, two, three, and that'll still allow us to leave up Command Tower. So we're going to grab three basic lands, put them into our uh, into our hand. So at this point, we've got. Um, we'll just let's go with. Like I mentioned, we only need access to really to one to two red sources. We're going to go forest, forest, and we'll go for another mountain. It's so nice to take advantage of those land drops with the Horn of Greed, but uh, it is what it is. Sometimes you get Scrooge on the battlefield. Uh, let's go and get down Snow-Covered Forest, and uh, we're simply just going to go and hold on to Beast Token at this point right now. We could try to push in, and actually now that I think about it, we'll try to push in next turn, because we want to get that Monarch Token back. So yeah, we'll probably push in next turn, because they could just sit back with Queen Marchesa, and... Uh, we need to put them in a position where they need to recast Queen Marchesa to get advantage, uh, get the uh, the Monarch token advantage. And typically, it's uh, it's fun playing against Queen Marchesa in one versus one commander because it ends up being just battle over the Monarch token. And uh, not saying that our opponent's going to be like this, but I have noticed that a few Queen Marchesa players, um, if they have a, if they're pretty serious Queen Marchesa players, as, as long if you have the Monarch token for like more than like two or three turns. Um, they they tend to scoop. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that. And I'm always just like, come on, Queen Marchesa. All right, so opponent's going to be swinging in with Queen Marchesa with 3-3 three, three with Death Touch. Yeah, I, I guess that's okay. Coming in for 3. Yeah, that's fine, because we, we want to at least challenge our opponent next turn with them being completely tapped out for uh, the Hidden. And then we can at least challenge them to at least get rid of that, and then we can do something about Queen Marchesa. So we, we can make that work. And we draw to Illusioner's Bracers. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, and then eight. We go for Praetor's Council to bring back a bunch of stuff. Yeah, let's go ahead and push in with Beast Token because we're going to see the trade right now. I would assume we'd see the trade. So we're going to go and swing them the Beast Token and we'll see if they want to offer it. Actually, no, we'll get the Monarch Token, get an additional card draw. I'll take that. It's going to give us the uh, Monarch Token. And let's go ahead and get down Snow Covered Forest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, and I guess at this point, we have no lanes in the graveyard, so Splendid Rex really not... Well, we do have Snow-Covered Forest. Let's go for Illusioner's Bracers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And actually, if we end up going for... 
Yeah, if we go for Splendid Wreck, that's going to bring back the forest. I mean, we're in a position now where we're playing against Queen Marchesa. We kind of need to be aggressive. So, yeah, I think I'm okay with Splendid Wreck. Because even with Splendid Reclamation, return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, if we had some sort of life from the loan value engine going, I would certainly hold on to um, Splendid Reclamation. But if we can use it for a four mana, just get a hit on lands, I'm that's perfectly fine with me. Because we need to, uh, sooner than later, our opponent's going to close it out since they do have access to at least four mana. Not access to four mana, but they're playing a uh, three-color Queen Marchesa deck that cares about controlling the board. So we need to be pretty aggressive on our end. Now that does put us in a position where we can get go for uh, Uncle Borby for next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can actually tap out for Uncle Borby. That does give us only one Christmas present in our hand, though. And if you're keeping score at home, there's at least three people on our opponent's side of the board that have been naughty people. And so we need to make sure we give all of them a Christmas present. Or if we want to give our opponent a Christmas present, too. So that's where it's really important that we uh, get some sort of life from the loan value engine going with Uncle Borby, because that really makes it uh, makes the Christmas joy a lot better and a lot more fun for everybody involved. Uh oh. True conviction. Creatures you control have double strike and lifelink. That's going to be six. That's going to be eight, 14. That'll be 16. Uh, that's going to be a pretty good chunk of damage. Rut row. They will get the monarch token back too. That's going to put us down to 12, and that will be 12 total commander damage. Okay, so with that true conviction, that's going to make it. Uh, not so good for us. Can we survive another... So they do not have Trample. We did draw into another land, so I like that. Let's go for Uncle Borby. Ho, ho, ho. Let's get the eggnog going. Heard there's been some bad people out here. <laughs> Uncle Borby says. Uh, let's go to get down Uncle Borby. And we do not want to click on a land. I remember doing that one year where I accidentally clicked on a land instead of like being lethal, and that drove me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so you always, you don't want to click on the land uh, before you throw it with Uncle Borby. So at this point right now, they go for Path on the Beast token instead of Uncle Borby. Okay, that's fine. We'll get an extra land on the battlefield. Maybe they have a uh, source to Plowshare. Thought they maybe would have gone for Uncle Borby, but I guess they're trying to close it out. Uh, let's go and grab another mountain because uh, we've got access to a lot of green. So that way, if we need to tap out for something like Overblaze, uh, we can get that moving. So right now, at this point, we have Uncle Borby. We have discard a land card, deals three damage to any target. We at least have three damage on Queen Marchesa and then three damage on the Assassin token. Um, that will stop them from getting rid of us. Butcher of the Horde, sack another creature. Um... Get your choice of Vigilance, Life Link, or Haste until end of turn. Okay. So that's going to be five. And that does have Haste at this point. So is there any way we can get out from this? It's going to be a double strike 10. Yeah, I don't think we can close it out. Because that's going to take two lands to get rid of Butcher of the Horde. We go for one land on Queen Marchesa. Oh, that's a bummer. True Conviction just really putting in some work. And I think that's going to get it. Yeah, because let's see. Butcher of the Horde is going to take two. That's going to be eight. That's going to be 14. We can get rid of the Assassin token. That's going to get rid of that. Give it a Queen Marchesa. But still puts this. Yeah, with that Butcher of the Horde, that really kind of complicated it. We'll still make sure that Butcher of the Horde has been, uh, been a bad boy this year. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that Butcher of the Horde uh, <laughs> does not get to enjoy its Christmas. But at this point right now, where it looks like Queen Marchesa is going to be able to get her stocking along with her assassin token. So, Merry Christmas. All right, it looks like Queen Marchesa is going to get it on this one. She's definitely the Scrooge of, of Christmas sometimes. But hey, that's how Christmas goes. Anyway, we got to at least see uh, two presents being thrown. And uh, Merry Christmas. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Ho, 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 and welcome to the Uncle Borby Christmas special. As far as our opening hand goes, we've got... Ancient Tomb and a Snow-Covered Man, if that was a Snow-Covered Forest, uh, we would be in business. But I'm not super... Yeah, let's go in Mulligan. Not super wild about this opening ham. And then we've got Ancient Tomb, Tranquil Thicket, Life from the Lo... Yeah, we can keep on this one. We can make this work. We have Yavi Maya Elder. And then Council. You know what? Let's go ahead and put that on the bottom for right now. That's not going to uh, help us out too much on this early turn. But yes, Merry Christmas and welcome to the Uncle Bulbry Christmas Special. Hope you're excited to sit around the fire and... Throw some uh, presents around the room. Drink some gruel eggnog. Let's see what we draw into. I'll probably lead off with Tranquil Thicket. Yeah, just because we need to get that green mana online. So let's go and lead off with that. And then anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. We're playing Uncle Borby. 
the Christmas Secret Santa Trample. Whenever Uncle Bor deals combat damage to a player, uh, reveal the uh, top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand, then dis and the rest into your graveyard. Then discard a land card. Uncle Bor deals three damage to any target. And then Kess. Uh, flying during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard. If you cast, if a card casts this boy, him to Turok on Ancient Tomb. Um, during each of your turns, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. If a card casts this way, be put into your graveyard. Exile it instead. And we did get hit with that uh, that him to Turok. But thankfully, with us having access to life from the loam, we're going to be able to bounce back from that. I was going to get down Snow-Covered Mountain, and we're going to go for, uh, yeah, I think I like that, life from the loam. Let's go green and then uh, tap down that last red. And basically, at this point right now, if we're, you know, if our opponents could be playing some sort of hand disruption game plan, uh, we're going to be on the uh, dredge life from the loam. Really get our graveyard going and make sure we have more than enough presence to hand out to Kess. Because we, unfortunately, uh, if we're going to be cross checking our naughty or nice list, uh, it might be that Kess might be on the naughty list with that him to Turok. So uh, we need to make sure we get her a ton of uh, presence going in the graveyard so we can bring him back to our hand so Uncle Borby can throw them over there. And our opponent's going to get down a search for Azcantha. Um, yeah, let's go to go for the uh, Life from the Loam Dredge. That's going to put the Fungal Reaches into the Wilds and then Dictate into the Graveyard. Uh, let's go and go for Life from the Loam. Yeah, because unfortunately we have no way to get an extra fetch land going. Well, if we want to, so if we get down Ancient Tomb, that does put us in a position where we can go for Far Wanderings. Uh, we do not have the access to... Yeah, actually, let's go and go for Fungal Reaches because, well, we have to put some storage counters on there. Yeah, we'll still go and go for it. <laughs> Yeah, because we want to get down far wondering because once we have threshold, and then we can definitely do that by uh, kind of dredging our library. So let's go for life in the little bring back fungal reaches. Uh, we'll go ahead and if they want to counter this, uh, and so be it. Go for it. All right, fluster storm. Okay, uh, we'll still make the land drop too. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Can't pay, pay for that fluster storm. But if they're going to burn a fluster storm on a uh, life from the loam, I will definitely take it. Uh, we'll go and get down Blighted Woodland, and then we're simply just going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, if you have not seen Uncle Borby before, this is a really fun deck. Um, in fact, I've got a Christmas playlist. If you need to go check it out, I think this is the. I want to say this is the third year that I've done Uncle Borby. Possibly, yeah, it's got to be the third year because I think we did one year of Uncle Borby. And then I think Uncle Borby is one of my first, uh, one of my first Christmas decks. And so, uh, yeah, I, th I think we did it one year, and then the next year I kind of did it. And so this will be the uh, third year that we're doing Uncle Borby's Christmas special, which is always a lot of fun. I always enjoy it. And it's definitely one of those uh, commanders that uh, I wish we kind of had it throughout the year because it's so much fun to play. Uh, one of my favorite moments with uh, Uncle Borby is, I forget who we were playing against. Man, we're just <laughs> running into hand disruption. That's fine. We'll just get the life from the loam going and just start just making our land drops. That's all we can do. Um, so what we can do is if we actually get down life from the, get down ancient tomb, the one, two, three, four, sacrifice to get two basic lands on the battlefield. I think that'll allow us to get a little bit ahead on lands, just a little bit quicker. So let's get down ancient tomb. Let's go for the activated ability because that also allow us to uh, get a few more lands going, uh, or at least give us something to grab off of life and loan for next turn. So we're gonna go and activate a blighted woodland, and we're gonna grab a another green source and grab another red source. Let's grab snow covered forest, and let's go and grab snow covered mountain because it is Christmas time. And then anything else? No, we're gonna go and pass the turn. Now, thankfully, with our opponent going for something like him to Turok and Inquisition of Kozilek, Collective Brutality, um, they've only got two cards in the hand. So even if they do get down Kess. Um, if they just want to keep attacking our hand, eventually it's going to get to the point to where we're just basically just bringing back lands out of the graveyard uh, with life from the loam. So once we get to that special uh, eight mana, get on Uncle Borby and start throwing some lands, uh, we can really get the Christmas Christmas spirit going. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to see the uh, the Uncle Borby Christmas special, it'll be in the playlist and uh, you get to see through the years. And that's one of the fun things about doing these decks on my channel is that. Um, you know, I've, I've done this deck for three Christmases in a row now. And so you get to experience me as I've been doing my channel uh, between the years. And so, there, you know, some of the first Uncle Borby videos are definitely something very interesting to see. Ooh, draw the council, which will be, uh, yeah. Return all cards from your uh, graveyard to your hand. Exile it. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're only sitting at six mana. Let's go and get our lane drops going. Let's go for Blighted Woodland. Let's go for Snow Covered. And then we'll go for Fungal Reaches. And I think... 
yeah, we can still, we can get down um, Blighted Woodland and still go for the Ancient Tomb and Snow-Covered Mountain activations to get that down. So let's get down Blighted Woodland. Let's go for the activations. We would be in so much business if we had a uh, extra land producer. So we're going to go for Blighted Woodland. Let's get down snow cover. So at this point, we've got, yeah, we'll just go and split it down the middle again. We'll go for mountain, and then we'll go for snow covered forest, and then anything else. Kick it back over to our opponent. Now, with Praetor's Council, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are online for Council. Um, we are playing against a pretty, you know, cutthroat cast deck, you know, simply by looking at Inquisition of Kozilek and a lot of these different options. And our opponent did actually put a, a demonic tutor into the graveyard. So. Makes me wonder if they have some sort of tutor. Um, but basically, with us having, uh, with us going for Praetor's Council, we're probably a pretty good chance of us running into a counter spell. But that would be a good option for us to, uh, you know, if we want to do a counter spell test for Uncle Borby, I and mean, we go for Council, bring all this stuff back to our hand because Dictate of the uh, Twin Gods with Life from the Loam, I uh, then get a ton, ton of damage done. So hopefully, uh, I think. We'll Probably end up going for Praetor's Council. We'll still judge life from the loam to kind of get that graveyard going, and that'll put us in a really good position to uh, go for Council. And every time I see this card, I always think about Eli, because, uh, oh, and excuse me, yeah, if you're putting it into the graveyard with Kess, it doesn't matter. I was trying to figure out uh, when they dumped Demonic Tutor into the graveyard, and I love that art too. Um, when they dumped Demonic Tutor in the graveyard, I was like, oh, they must have a tutor in their hand, but then I forgot that uh, Kess can grab it. Uh, but anyway, I always think of Eli with uh, Praetor's Council. Because uh, for a very long time, he suggested it with Dami, and I'd always forget to put it in there. So <laughs> every time I finally see it, I'll be like, oh yeah, there we go. Thanks, Eli. All right, let's go and dredge life from the loam. And more than likely, they probably just ripped a counter spell um, off of that demonic tutor. But I think we'll still go ahead and just go for the counter spell test. So let's go and get down Snow Covered Mountain, and let's go for Council. That's going to be one, two, three. And that'll put us at uh, one, two. There we go. We're going to go for Praetor's Council. If they have a counterspell, they, uh, they've got it. If not, we're going to be able to bring back a bunch of stuff back to our hand. And then, uh, you know, if they need to burn a counterspell to protect, yeah, that's fine. Ooh, ho, ho. that's going to be pretty nasty. Hopefully, they uh, they don't have a good way to take advantage of that. That was a pretty, uh, that's a very nice mana drain. You get eight mana. So they're going to get eight colorless mana added to their mana pool. And then we'll see what else uh, we can get going. So at this point right now, we're pretty much on the Uncle Borby game plan of getting him down and then using Life from the Loam. Um, Uncle Borby is definitely like one of those land commanders where... Ooh, okay. Let's go Thoughtseize. We definitely want to split up Liliana and Thoughtseize. Because we don't really want to play against Liliana. I'm actually okay with going with this pile because if they want to get down Liliana, that's going to make it really hard for us to go for Uncle Borby. Um, if they want to go for Thoughtseize, they're going to grab Life from the Loam, which we want in the graveyard anyway. And that's going to give them a cantrip. And this is a really nice value pile right here. And uh, yeah, that's fine. If they want to go for Liliana, we can still end up discarding that. The only thing is it puts us down to that minus two. So we're, yeah, we're okay with that. I'm afraid if we add an additional card to Liliana, that'll make it really good for them to just basically keep... Oh, yeah, see? They straight up just went for Liliana, so... I'm glad we went for that pile. But thankfully, once we do get down Uncle Borby, they can go for that discard ability, but we can uh, deal three damage to any target. So once we get a few extra lands in our opening hand, then we can uh, really take care of Liliana. All right, so we got Yagmas Wheel. We got Starstorm. Dreadboard. Let's see. Yeah, double Factor Fiction is... Ooh, that is... Uh, that is not too hot. Uh, so Yagmas Will, let's go and split it up to where it's Dreadbore. Definitely don't want to play against Dreadbore. And then Yagmas Will. I guess we'll put it like that. That way they still have access to some sort of uh, destroy if they want to. They can guard Wasteland. But you can see how brutal um, Kes can be <laughs> in one versus one commander. You know, this is a... This is pretty much um, what I consider a tuned for one versus one commander list, which is you know perfectly fine. That's, uh, that's what we're playing. We're playing one versus one commander, so it's just uh, most of the time you get one versus one commander, and it's it, it's pretty even. But then sometimes you run into some pretty uh, pretty cutthroat stuff that's uh, legacy light almost in a way, and this is definitely one of those. So we're gonna go discard life from the loam. And uh, click OK. There we go. The only downside is it basically just makes it a little bit hard to. Uh, when you've got an eight uh, converted mana cost commander, it makes it a little bit hard to get your Christmas Christmas game plan going. So, and then it looks like our opponent's going to go ahead and pass the turn. They're going to go and swing in with Cass. That will put us down to uh, 
18, and they'll put us down to 6. So let's, let's see what we... Uh, probably still going to go for Life from the Loam. Yeah, let's go and dredge Life from the Loam. Okay. So at this point right now, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We've got 9 total mana. We get down Fungal Reaches. That's not going to keep us... We can use that to discard on Liliana and then force him to go for Dreadbor for next turn. Yeah, if we're going for a pretty good turn with Uncle Borby, I feel like we need to load up on as many lands as possible. So let's grab a Wooded Foothills, let's grab Taiga, and let's grab Blighted Woodland. So, and let's see if this is going to stick. Because we are still playing around a Dreadbor. So, you know, let's say that we get down Uncle Borby. Um, we don't have the lands to support it. And at this point right now, we're just going to hold on to these lands. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we want to have as much uh, as much fodder as possible. So at this point right now, we're just simply just going to go and pass the turn. And the next turn, we'll see if we can't get down Uncle Borby to stick. And that's one of the fun things about Uncle Borby is once you get Life from the Loam going, you get to the late game like this. Um, Life from the Loam is such a good card. Um, it's great in dredge decks. It's great in other things. But you can see in a deck like this where simply just being able to dredge Life from the Loam, um, being able to make your land drop turn after turn, you're getting to the point now to where, you know, unfortunately with Kess, the entire graveyard is online. But they've only got three cards left in their hand. But you get to this point to where it's just basically you, you never kind of run out of resources. You're always furthering your graveyard and different things like that. So with Uncle Borby, once we get him down, this is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. Um, that'll be a pretty good chunk of damage. And you can see where um, going for Uncle Borby in addition to something like Dictate of the Twin Gods, uh, it would deal double that damage. You know, it's going to be 6, 12, 18, 24. That would almost uh, be lethal. So... It's definitely still a pretty fun commander to play and always enjoy it. And I think we're running, last time I checked, I think we're running 44 lands in here. So that's a, that's a lot of nice Christmas plans. Now we do have uh, two Planeswalkers on the battlefield. So we've got two more people on the naughty list, uh, Liliana and Dak Faden. Uh, so once we do finally get down Uncle Borby, we will uh, try to distribute, ooh, Pithing Needle. Let's see what they name off of Pithing Needle. If they're going to name Uncle Borby, they could name the wrong... Uh, they could name the wrong Uncle Borby, so we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's going to be game. We're going to go and scoop it up on this one. Good game. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those, uh, we've been put through the ringer. We're going to um, <laughs> we're gonna scoop it up on this one. Opponent gets down Pithy Needle on Uncle Borby. Um, basically, with that uh, Pithy Needle, there's nothing we can really do to that. So we're just going to go and scoop it up. And unfortunately... Uh, the Scrooges of Liliana and Dak Faden. They make sure that Uncle Borby was not able to throw his Christmas presents around the tree. So anyways, Merry Christmas. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.